just arrived from Ipo. It's a horrible jam all over. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, uh, I became famous because of this uh, animal over there. Uh, it was Malaysia's second animated feature film. And uh, I had never done a short film before. Never animated for a short film. Didn't know about writing. But the minister was breathing my neck, uh, down my neck because he was watching the, uh, he saw the first film, which took 11 years to make, all manually drawn. And then he said, wow, wonderful, go ahead and make 13 series. He never asked me whether we have the people, whether we know how to do it. Anyway, let's start at the beginning. Uh,
and there's one book that uh, was published in Malaysia, now it's out of print. I think it was first published in uh, 1958. And it has got very detailed stories of the country, while the rest are quite quite simple. But this one had a lot of, uh, what do you call, uh, substance to it. Right? So the wiping of the earth, uh, so many cultures celebrate animals. In India, it's the elephant. Why? Because they have the god Ganesha, the space is like elephant. So the one uh, made in Thailand was, uh, uh, the title was changed to the blue elephant, and it was dubbed into Hindi and shown there. And uh, also so on DVD in the US. Uh, so here, the uh, mouse deer is a very small, and because of the way it moves, it's campus, uh, somehow or other they attach wildness and the ability to outwit bigger animals through that. So it became very famous and they created stories around it. And play folklore tells about how Kanchil gets the better of uh, more fiercer animals through its wit. And they have something called Nikaya Plando Tenaka, tales of the wily mouse deer, and uh, either 15th or 16th century. I remember reading, I cannot find it now, there was an article, academic article, whether the mouse deer was Paranakan. I can't even know what it was about. But I will post it on uh, Heritage and History. Okay? Okay, next. Uh, there are three manuscripts of this uh, in the British uh, Library. Very nasty colonialists, they all take it. But now it's uh, digitized and you thought it was the original Pinang or Kedah. So maybe we cannot say the word cunning because it's always got a negative connotation. And at the end, the monkeys become friends of the lady, blah blah blah, and so on. And about royal power, ah, this is the important thing. So there was a satire, it was a satire on power characterized by Ian Brown, complain human nature. You can have your laws, blah blah blah, but if they want to do it, they will do it now. <laughs> so uh, here are some of our books. Uh, they have the clever mouse deer, not the cunning mouse deer. Eh? So it's a bit more positive. And uh, they have this see Anna, Tansi, Nanda, Kapokimai, Shilin, Minata. These are all stories that are not very popular. The popular one is the mouse deer and the monkey, the mouse deer and the crocodiles, and the mouse deer and uh, Solomon's uh, belt. Okay, next. Ah, these are two very popular stories. So I have done uh, two ways, uh, uh, both of these in animation. It's on YouTube. Just go to Sankanchil and Ponyet, Sankanchil and Dwyer. So it was done at a time when uh, none of us had done animation before. So these films were actually training films. And because I had experience in doing animation for commercials, I was the one who planned everything out and the uh, designers just followed orders. That's not a good way to work, but it worked. And until today, <laughs> people are still looking at it. Uh, both films uh, had 40,000 hits. But the first one at 400,000, that's very unusual. Okay, next. Okay, this is the actual mouse deer. Not very nice to look at. <laughs> but for animation, we have to work hard. Very small. That's why they call it mouse deer. And it's campus. So, next. Uh, in Indonesia, it's also one of the icons. And they made a couple of short animated films. I do not know whether it went on TV, but in Malaysia it was sold on DVD, so I managed to uh, get uh, one, one DVD. Now this one was made by a friend of mine called Daniel Sariato from Indonesia, and it was made in Hong Kong. I don't know for what. I cannot discover. <laughs> so if you look at the characters, you can see how different it is from our own. It's very cartoony. Thanks. So if you look at the characters that have been designed in Indonesia, this is by Jaffa Tayyip. So when I did the first one, I modeled it after the first film because we had no reference. But when I did the second one, uh, uh, I modeled it after Jaffa uh, character because it looked cute and it looked more uh, closer to the actual Kanchil. Uh, but of course, the body is not, uh, it's, a, it's a fierce body. Next. So, when Philip Negara, where I was working, Uh, if there's someone that you hate 
and you want to kill that guy, <laughs> buy this book, throw it at him. Sure die. <laughs> uh, but, uh, white chip, 120. So I brought three. Please buy and make me rich. <laughs> In this book, I chronicle the entire history from 1946 until 2016. Uh, I was involved in 45 of the 70 years of education, so it is told from a first-person point of view. But I also look into all the earlier stories, the legends and so on. So it's not academic, but it can be used for academic purposes. So uh, the, when the first book was made, it was made, uh, the, character, the story was based on a book that had been written by two guys, Arthur Hillman and Walter W. Ski. Probably this is not familiar to researchers on uh, blame magic and uh, blame culture in the 1910s, 1920s. So they compile this uh, oral story, that's why I said Masare, very good. They do all these things, uh, but I think they had the reason uh, for that. Right? So uh, it was published in 1938, I think. So this was uh, given to me by a friend of mine. Uh, this is a copy of the original book. Nobody makes uh, a book like this anymore. Okay, next. So this is the uh, guy, uh, Anandam Xavier, who was a titling artist and a set designer who was working with the Malayan Film Unit that was set up by the British in 1946. So, uh, uh, he was not interested in making animation. He was forced to make. Why? Because sometimes sitting around doing nothing, they said, okay, you better be productive, uh, do animation. Because he had done animation for commercials, and he was a very good background artist. Everything in the book was done by him, but he never got any recognition. So read the details in the book, okay? So I am the one who has been promoting him, that now people discover, oh, so he's the first animator, our first animation, short animation filmmaker. Next to him is Bo Ming Huat, the first animator in Malaysia, when he joined in 1946. He is the grandson of Yap Alwai, still alive, but, uh, not, not so healthy. He was my boss. So he became the art director and then I took over from him in 1981. I'm actually quite old. I'm, I'm 72 years old. So instead of putting me in a museum, but ask me. <laughs> so this is the first film, uh, still from the first film. Uh, and look at the deer. They're supposed to be mouse deer. So that's uh, the kanjil over there. And the reason why they made it like that because to draw the kanjil as it was, uh, it would look very uh, not so good. So they modeled it after Bambi. So at that time they saw the film Bambi in the 1950s. And then they took the story of the crocodile catching hold of the rape of the buffalo. Even though the buffalo had saved the crocodile, the tree, and the, the branch that had fallen on it. So now kanjil comes in and says, well, life is cruel, what do we do? But he saves the buffalo because the crocodile very stupid. Okay. <laughs> ah, so here's uh, the cover, front cover and back cover of my book, where I pay homage to the first film and uh, the, the second film that I made, uh, the Kanchil and the crocodile. I have the crocodile climbing the tree, and uh, uh, that's my animation uh, cycle of the crocodile walking. Uh, that is Mud Club, the first any, uh, feature film to have uh, character animation and animation over live action, which I did in 1990. And uh, that's uh, Open Elephant, it became a huge hit in Malaysia and in Indonesia. And then Oh Boy Boy, this is uh, Agent Ali, which is now on TV. And the one up there is uh, uh, Mayam, Spirits of the Sea, done by a lecturer in uh, UITM, Hajar Arna. And uh, I've taken this film to Stuttgart, to Hungary, and to uh, Singapore, and I curated the uh, animation festivals there. Next. So this is the second film done by me. So when the new Minister of Information came, and we had a new head of department, so of course they wanted to uh, show off. So they said, let's make animation. And I had just been promoted. Of course I couldn't say, sorry sir, I don't know how to do animation. So I crossed my finger and said, yes, we will do it. And we came up with uh, some kind of the mouse here and the mouse. So I cheated a lot by having nicely drawn backgrounds so that I don't have to do so much animation. 
And the Minister of Green my down my neck and it took us about eight months to come up with this short five minute film, entirely hand drawn and, and painted. So I modified the story. I had the monkey eating the chili. I don't know whether that was in the story. I think so. I have. So fire came out because I thought that if somebody ate chili like that, definitely fire would come out of the ears. And this struck a chord. And until today, it is still popular and people can remember the dialogue. The first film was 13 minutes long. And it did not really use the animation medium to get the humor across. It was very straightforward uh, adaptation. But mine was a real adaptation. I changed the story around. And I had the visual language. So I can tell you one of the film language that I've included. And the reason why people still like to see it is the panchil and the turtle are in the jungle. A jungle never looks like this. But it is a jungle that is cinematic. And I have a light coming from above, falling on them. And if you watch a movie, any Hollywood movie, if the hero is sitting near a window and the light is falling on him like that, it means visually he is a spiritual person. This is film language. And then later, when the monkey eats the chili and hops about, I mentioned all this in my book to, so that people understand the visual language. He hops about onto a couple of trees and the trees are like this in a cross. What does cross mean? Visually, you are wrong. And then I also have binary of vision. Establish panchil and the turtle on the ground with greenery. But the moment I introduce the monkey, he's up in the air, jumping from tree to tree. So his feet are literally not on the ground. So it's a metaphor for his, his character. Alright, next. So that's us shooting uh, under the animation camera. And this is the animation camera. It looks like a rocket. Today, it, uh, it was bought for 600,000 ringgit in 1961. Today, you cannot sell it even for 10 ringgit. Nobody wants it. But in those days, if you did not know about what this camera can do, what it cannot do, and how to plan for shooting under the camera, you cannot become an animator or a title designer. So today, everybody has it easy. Previously, you really have to know what this camera can do. Okay, next. So the second film was uh, the mouse deer and the crocodile. Again, I changed the story around. I had nine crocodiles, and the character design of the crocodiles was the same. But the boss of the crocodile had no teeth. The rest had teeth. They are all ferocious. He's stupid. <laughs> and his eye, uh, eyebrow is a bit higher up, uh, a bit uh, compared to the others, all coming down to show their ferociousness. And I made it funny at the beginning, and then. Kanchil, uh, knows, cannot bluff all the others, but he can bluff the boss because he's stupid. So he says, the king has asked me to count the number of crocodiles here because he's going to have a big feast. And of course, this guy believes it. And then he gets everybody uh, to line up in the river and he crosses over. In the other stories, they had the monkey doing this. But here, I had uh, Kanchil doing it. And at the end, the, uh, the story was meant for young, uh, young kids uh, and the moral message. But here, he is bluffing. So, cannot. I'm 15 years old. So, uh, in the end, even though he crosses the river to, and gets to the other side, because there are fruits, he finds that the fruits have been eaten by the monkeys. So, he doesn't succeed. And we have, of course, the message in the end. Okay, next. Now, because I had done that, I was asked to design or redesign the Sankanjil uh, coin box for Ben Omiputra. So, it had been done before, but it looked like a deer. So, I came in, modified it, so it looks a little cute. But I had a tanja, the Malay tanja. Then I saw, hey, how come it has a bowler head? So, they went and changed it. Next. So, I also did this uh, character design of Johan for the Sea Games and also designed the whole. Uh, all the other games. Next. Then I used the character of the Monyet in a public service advertisement for the gas cylinder. Okay, then I had it coming in instead of someone uh, smelling gas and then striking a match and then blowing everything up, I had the monkey. And when I did the Malaysia's first animated feature film called Silat Agenda, 
I paid homage to the mouse deer as the first cartoon character introducing me while the boys are going up Gunung Ledang. And the, uh, one of them uh, gives something to uh, the mouse deer, something to eat. Next. Then, uh, while we were making all those films, I got some ASOP scribbles and made the Clever Pro in cutout animation and the Green Lion, Lion, Green Lion also. All were training films for, for my staff. And the Arabic uh, rabbit, but I gave a twist to it. Next. And uh, now we have uh, Le Copa. Uh, we have done in 3D. Uh, very nicely done, but uh, somehow other it doesn't catch on. So very cute character, but somehow other 3D is too smooth. Uh, the secret in cell animation drawing by hand are the spaces between drawings. So, these are some of the titles. We have Ranger, the White Mouse Deer, and then the Surrender of the Monkey King, the Monster of the Gatsi being subdued, etc. Et uh, these are some of the uh, fables and uh, books that are available that we can turn into animation, and it's all in my book. Next. Okay, finance. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, any any questions? Okay, no questions. I will, uh, okay, I will have a this book by Pak Hassan Abu Talib. Abu Talib. Yeah. And it's going at 120 only. 120 only. <laughs> and it's a series. It's a serial. Uh, the first one I will have got serial number. <laughs> Want to sign this year? Uh, if you want me to sign today, I will
And this is the result of Dato Kamen Osman and his team at Multimedia Development Corporation who started uh, all this by going international. And then now, we have companies who are making animation for Nickelodeon, for Cartoon Network, Disney Asia, and so on. So we are not actually stuck. We have actually moved forward. And uh, it was because of the very strong government so support from the 1990s, where they spent, actually spent a lot of money to promote ourselves at the international film markets and so on. I think the reason is economy. <clears throat> so as more and more people are learning animation, multimedia, films and so on, where are going to go once they graduate? So by having this, they are moving the industry, uh, making animation for the government station first, now as true as coming to the picture, NTV7, uh, TV3 and so on, especially with the hit of uh, Open and Pay. So now a lot of people are having jobs and actually we don't have enough animators, enough good animators. There are animators, but I also mentioned in my book that we are not training people in the right way. So I, I don't think the academics are going to hit out at me because they are all scared. Uh, uh, I say that we should be teaching, uh, training animation filmmakers, not animators. If you train people to be animation filmmakers, they can become writers, they can become directors and so on. Even if they don't want to be writers, but at least they understand writing, they can, they can work uh, well with directors. Because directors need ideas from uh, the animators also to change things and so on. That's how it works. So that's the way we need to go. Another problem that we are facing is we have uh, multimedia people, uh, graduates in multimedia teaching animation, which is wrong. Because animation is a very highly specialized medium. And uh, I think the best course that I conducted was the Sheridan uh, Canada course uh, when I was at Lim Kok in the 1990s. That was the correct animation training. And everything that I was saying from the 70s and 80s was there in the syllabus. So all those early graduates are among the best in the industry now. That, uh, that ends the uh, series.